If you decide to purchase a fully fledged gaming smartphone, well the odds are you're probably purchasing it with the priority of gaming in mind. The Red Magic 5G does that perfectly well with its wonderful 144Hz display, powered with a Snapdragon 865 processing chip, as well as an internal cooling fan and touch triggers. But how do the cameras stack up as opposed to its gaming performance? This phone is a monster and this time around comes with a trio of cameras at the back. The primary sensor that we have here is a 64 megapixel IMX 686 sensor with an aperture of f1.8. This is indeed the successor to the 48 megapixel IMX 586 sensor that we saw in so many phones last year. The secondary camera is an 8 megapixel ultra wide with an aperture of f2.0. We have a tertiary camera here as well, which is a two megapixel macro lens. No optical image stabilization in the trio over here. And there is of course that lack of a telephoto lens. The selfie camera comes paired with a 12 megapixel f2.0 sensor. Guys, this is Technic. This is the Nubia Red Magic 5G camera review. And without further ado, let's go. We're going to start here with a couple main raw shots going down to a 4 to 1 pixel binning. So that was 64 megapixel, then 4 to 1 pixel binning, bring it down to 16 megapixels. Here is the main raw again of 64, looks absolutely great, but 16, the colors really do pop when the shot is binned down. It does use some AI over here as well. You'll see how the colors pop on these phone booths as well with the 16 megapixel still here with 4 to 1 pixel binning. So what 4 to 1 pixel binning pretty much does, for those of you who don't know, it takes the main sensor, which is in this case case 64 megapixel you divide it by four it then takes a sampling of four pixels and combines them into a one for a greater detailed shot and it does show you here the Nubia Red Magic 5G does do a fantastic job with its 64 megapixel stills but if you want to change your resolution between 16 and 64 megapixels you have to go into the settings which really sucks sometimes it can take quite a bit of time it was a bit of a hassle for me when I was actually taking pictures on the fly for this camera review now when we come to ultra wide we have an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor over here and the difference between its main bin shot of the 16 megapixel to ultra wide is not too bad we don't have much ultra wide blur on the edges of the shots either which is good to see a lot of phones suffer from this it looks like a, a pretty flat forward shot it looks absolutely great though I must say that the color dynamic range and just the detail in the color itself doesn't really shine through and if you want to use ultra wide you can't just use it in the regular photo mode you actually have to switch over to pro mode I did ask team red at red magic if they're going to be adding this to the photo mode they said that there are no plans for it right now their priority is of course gaming I'll get to something that they told me as, as well a little bit later but now we're gonna go into zoom shots of course we don't have a telephoto lens here so three times is digital the presets on the phone is three five and ten ten times digital zoom is being the max over here it does not look good at all guys remember this is a gaming phone and I'm glad that they have added two extra sensors over here look at this shot ultra wide looks great the main shots taken on the red magic 5g are as good as the best camera phones out there even the bin shots look absolutely fantastic but as soon as you go into zooming of course you're hitting that digital front there you're not getting hybrid zoom and you're not getting optical zoom so the colors wash out completely the detail is blown out of proportion but you can still zoom so I guess that's a cool thing here we go we're gonna zoom into some text over here once again 64 megapixel main shot looks absolutely fantastic the color accuracy is seriously superb it looks really realistic it is so true to life as if I'm standing there right now it looked exactly the same but as soon as you go Going to that zoom once again to that 10 times you're getting a lot of pixelizing effect going on on the screen a lot of film grain over there as well now we're going into this construction construction is going on everywhere in Shanghai at the moment so we're gonna go into this crane right here and we're gonna zoom in but once again 16 megapixel bin shot looks fantastic zooming in here you can see the loss of quality really shoots right up in terms of loss especially going into that 10 times max zoom it's honestly it, it looks better with a Samsung on 30 times zoom but remember that is using a periscope lens if we are referring to the S20 Ultra. The macro sensor actually does such a superb job. I couldn't believe my eyes. This is probably the best macro sensor that I have seen on a phone. You can get it even closer up than on most other phones. And just with its two megapixel, most of them do it at five megapixels. Look at the detail that it retains so close up with a two megapixel store. It looks super fantastic. And here is my friend, Mr. Yoda. Going into that macro, you can see all the details on his face. He really does look great. This is the first time I must say I'm actually enjoying a macro camera on a phone. It would be nice to see telephoto or it has skyrocketed the price of a bit. And this is a gaming phone. When it comes to portrait mode, you get some other cool modes there. We get diffusion over here. 
And we also get overlying, that is what it's called, not overlaying. Uh, some cool little things to play around with, but regular portraits look fantastic on objects. There's not much edge detection around the actual object that does a fantastic job at blurring out the background. But when you throw a person as the subject in here, not an object, there is a ton of edge detection all around me. You can see it, it's not doing a fantastic job. My wife over here looking in the distance, it does surprisingly do a great job over here. Not much edge detection going on there, does a great job. Once again, we, when we throw an object in and we use edge detection with the portrait mode, does a superb job when it comes to an object, but not really a person. We also have some artsy modes. There is something called art mode on here. So I thought I'd flick through them and show you guys. It fills the whole screen, but it does such a great job and it actually processes the photo so darn fast. But these water watercolor oil painting, we have expressionist. It looks absolutely fantastic just to get a different kind of look. These This would be great for an Instagram pic. Maybe I'll post one soon. When it comes to video, we have 8K, 30 frames per second. Of course, most 8K, true 8Ks on Snapdragon 865, such as on the Samsung, can only do 15 frames per second because it is doing it at native. This actually upscales from 6K. Then with 4K, we get 60 frames per second. There is no optical image stabilization here. It does look pretty stable. There's no stabilization mode in here either. Guys, this is not a phone for camera and videography, but I must say its main images look surprisingly great. 1080p does not look the best, but it is the most stable out of the bunch at 60 frames per second. Good to see that we have 60 frames per second here. AK is a lot more usable if you're not personally walking around. You're just moving side to side, as you guys can see. I remember it is up upscaled from 6K. It looks fantastic. The, the quality just looks incredible. There is actually a tripod mode for 8K. So if you pop your phone on a tripod and you let things pass it, I think it could look absolutely phenomenal. 4K 60 frames per second is a lot more stable. Yeah, still a little bit jittery. Obviously 1080p 60 FPS is the smoothest option of the bunch over here, but that is all we have guys. There is no ultra wide mode when it comes to video recording, even though we have support for an ultra wide camera. I'll get to that in a second. 1080p 30 FPS time lapse looks fantastic over here. Pop this on a tripod for 30 minutes. Really looks great. We have 1920 FPS slow motion, though it is virtually impossible to record anything that is not consistently moving past you. So that train, for example, was so I could record that. As you guys can see, even at just full HD, 30 frames per second, there is no option for ultra wide. I did ask Team Red at Red Magic and they told me that it is in the works. So there is currently no video option with the ultra wide camera, but they will add it in a future software update. When it comes to night shots, you can see a lot more color and it's a lot brighter, a lot more detail when we turn on night mode, as you guys can see here with this water bottle. Going indoors here, it's not too dark, but as soon as we jump into night mode, a lot more detail shines through. So you can actually use night mode even when it is dim lit, not completely dark, and it really pops all the colors and the detail it looks fantastic. Especially over here with these four tacos, you can see it a lot better with night mode turned on. Slightly darker situation here out on the streets. Turning on night mode really brightens up the shot. It doesn't make it look as if it's a day picture, which I like. I want it to still look like an evening picture, but it really brings the clarity aspect through. A lot of phones such as the OnePlus or the Samsung, they'll make it look as if it's a complete day shot. If I want a day looking photo, then I'm gonna take the photo during the day. You still want that feel that it's evening. So now we're on main over here and now we're gonna shoot over tonight. Once you get, once again, you can see it is a night photo, but things look a lot more clear. Sometimes you get a bit of grains so though. This is a picture of a restaurant I went to the other day. It looks fantastic, but not so much the ultra wide lens, but look at that night shot. Really great job. Good job, Nubia. Going into the little Taco Saloon here, ultra wide once again, looks okay, but the main 16 bin looks great. And wait for it, night mode looks fantastic. Look at the detail in the colors, it looks really great. Once again, we have an ultra wide shot over here. It's okay, lose quite a bit of color and a little bit of detail. Going into the main shot, still looks pretty decent, but once again, the night mode just looks phenomenal. I cannot tell you how impressed I am with the night photography on a gaming phone. I never thought I'd be saying that. And when we switch over to night mode over here on the street, look how it controls all the lights over there. It really brings them down to their natural source. There is a bit of like noise from the light, but it still does a fantastic job of handling it. When it gets really dark, now it is super dark. This was at like 2 a.m. guys. Going into night does not look the greatest over here, but it still does a decent job. I like to go play football sometimes and this ultra wide shot looked okay. The main shot looked okay over here, but shooting into night mode, it looks really great, but you can see a little bit of issues. I'm not sure if you guys can pick up on them somewhere around. We don't have zoom night mode options here, but we do have regular zoom, so three Three times, five times, this is not night mode, just regular zoom at night. Doesn't look terrible, not the best though, but it doesn't look terrible. 
Ultra wide does not look great in a really dark situation over here. 16 megapixel main shot with night mode off doesn't look too bad. Look how it controls the light with night mode on. It looks fantastic. Now we're gonna go into a zoom again. Remember no night mode over here, three times digital zoom. Doesn't look terrible. Five times digital zoom once more. And then our max, which is 10 times digital zoom, still doesn't do a terrible job because it was really, really dark in the situation. When it comes to night videography though, 8K is pretty much unusable. Well, it's actually brighter than the other modes, but it's so stuttery. It's it's not really recommended to use it at night. It even says in the app, best for outdoor day use only. 4K 60 frames per second looks a lot worse than 8K. You're picking up a lot less resolution. So everything is a lot more dark and a lot more black. The same thing can be said with 1080p. It looks a little bit better than 4K though. I think 4K looks the worst. But the thing is with 1080p, there are a lot more grains, a lot more film grain that you can see picking up on the screen compared to the previous two because of the resolution lacking. 12 megapixel selfie still. It is 12 megapixel guys. I know a lot of people say it's eight, but literally on the phone itself, it says 12 megapixels. I did confirm it is 12. The selfie photos look absolutely great. With portrait mode, it does not work. I don't know what it is. I did switch it to portrait mode. Every single one that I took with portrait mode, it does not blur the background. I'm gonna let them know and see if that they can fix this issue. And hopefully we can get a bit of a background blur over here. As you guys can see, main shot here and portrait look identical. They are, comp uh, they are different photos, but there is no blur at the back over there. We're gonna, sh it doesn't handle things too well when it is too bright in the background. Now we're gonna head over to some selfie video recording. This is a 1080p 30 frames per second selfie video recording on the Red Magic 5G. It is completely limited to 1080p resolution and capped at 30 frames per second when video recording using the selfie cam. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below of the video and audio quality when using selfie video recording on the Red Magic 5G. There is no night mode for taking selfies using the selfie camera at night, but it doesn't look terrible. I have definitely seen worse on flagship phones. Phones don't really know what they're doing when they're taking a picture at night. And when it is super dark, you can't even see my face over here, but not many people do this anyway. So I guess it's nothing really to worry about. Not many people also take video selfie video recording at night either. And this is what it looks like. It is garbage, but you know what? It's okay because this is not really a feature that people people really generally care about. The Red Magic 5G, yes, it's a gaming phone, but the three cameras on the back do a fantastic job most of the time. It's main center, the IMX 686 center, that 64 megapixel still looks breathtaking and bin down looks even better. The color accuracy is on par over there, but at the end of the day, guys, this is a gaming phone. It is built for gaming. It has everything that you would want in a gaming phone. I'm just glad to see that they didn't completely skimp out on the camera department and it still does a fantastic job when it comes to taking photos. I hope that you guys enjoyed the camera review of the Red Magic 5G. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.